Hey y'all, it's Sarah here. I wanted to bring you kind of a quickie craft today. Um, we're going to be doing these wooden arrows. I already did a couple ahead of time just to play with them. I just wanted to show this. It was a fun way to use some of the foam court uh, scraps. Let me show that. You can see... Mine is completely finished out, and I wanted to show a few tips and tricks on doing this. These are the colors that I used. I've already started a couple of pieces with a wash of the antique across it, and I'm going to go ahead and do my next couple of pieces. I'm using the Waverly Wax and Clear, Waverly Wax and Antique, and Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Ink. I'm going to put these to the side. Now, most of mine was made literally from scraps. Um, these little thin strips were left over when I cut something else down. This is the one and a half inch strips that I use for framing that I'm going to use as a base for this. These are the triangle pieces that are left when I cut my 45 degree angles on a 3 inch strip. And these are just these cut down with 45 degree angles. And I believe mine are at an inch and a half in length. So you'll need, if you want to do a full set of three like I'm doing, you'll need... Three strips cut at 16 inches. It's going to give you, um, it's going to give you a base for about a 17 to 18 inch arrow. So this one I've cut at 16. These are cut down at 15. And there's a reason why I did that. When we go to stack them together, there's going to be a little space down here. And that's going to allow us to attach our arrowhead. So three at this size, six at the 15 by three quarters. This is only three quarters of an inch wide. And essentially, this is just the one and a half inch cut in half. Um, if you don't have any triangle pieces as scraps yet, to get an even triangle like this, if you look, this is just basically part of a square. This is about a three inch square. If you cut a three by three square and just go from corner to corner, you'll have a nice perfect triangle. And I'm going to show you how I got um, the paint finish on these. I've done videos for these paint finishes, but I'm going to go over it with just this one. And I wanted to show a quick cheat. So these little pieces were really, really hard to hang on to, especially since it takes 12 per arrow. These are the pieces for my fletching. So I just stuck them to a back of some contact paper and that really made a difference on trying to paint up such small pieces so all I did to get this look is I started with my Waverly wax and antique and I'm gonna just dip my sponge in it I'm not mixing it with anything I'm just going with the straight Waverly wax and on these pieces, because I wanted a nice finished arrow front and back, and you can see mine is finished out front and back, I went ahead and did my edges. That way I have no white spots showing from any angle when this piece is complete. And 
And we'll just hit all the ends. I'm not going to distress this too much. Because these pieces are small, um, you end up getting more denting on the smaller, narrower pieces when you try to push down on it. So I'm not going to put any knot holes. There wasn't really a lot of room since the surface pieces are so narrow. Okay, so I've got pretty good coverage. This particular piece, I'm gonna cover front and back. And the reason being is that I want the front covered so that when I put this little space in here, there's no white showing through. And of course I want the back covered so that it's a finished out piece. So all I'm doing is just a really even, fairly light coat. And this is, this particular wood look is under the dark salvage barn wood tutorial. So these narrower pieces, I'm just going to squeeze together, get them coated, and kind of coat the back a little so that when I stack them, there's no white showing from either direction. Okay, and we're pretty good there. So I'm going to move on and show you all right, fingerprints now. I'm going to move those to the side, let them dry. Let me get my arrow. I went, with, which would be side to side on this arrow. To try to get my wood grain. I'm trying to keep that in mind with all of my arrowhead parts. Okay, so all these little pieces are going to have a chance to draw. These have had a chance to draw because it took so much effort to do each of these little pieces. I definitely wanted to get ahead on that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm mixing some black with a whole lot of wax. You can see that's mixed in. There's a whole lot of wax sitting there with that black. And I've kept my graining the same direction on all of these, which is why they're laid out the direction that they are so that I would know. And I'm going to take a little bit more of what should be my clear wax. It does look a little messy, but. And I'm going to blend some of this black in on these pieces. And you can see the difference that sticking them down to this contact paper. This just really, really helped the process. Otherwise, they were sliding everywhere on me. So you can see that's already turned slightly a shade different. I'm going to let that dry for a second and then I'll add a little more. I'll do the same thing to the other pieces. I'm keeping the black in the same strokes as the Waverly wax part was. That really could have used some more brown on there. I don't think I put enough of the antique on there as my base. So I'm just going to try to blend a little in. Hopefully these should be fairly dry enough. So I'm just going to take a little bit off my sponge here. 
Now where I did my brown edges, I'm gonna come back in with this Send Out ink color so that they're more similar to the overall color. Doing both sides of this is unnecessary. It's going to mostly get covered. I just didn't want white showing through, but I like it all to be a finished piece. And these little guys. I'm just going to go back in with the black paint and clear wax mix. Mixing that wax in is really, really helpful. It helps this paint float across this in a more translucent look rather than more solid coverage. And you can kind of see, I rotate them out to give that first layer a little bit of time. to soak in to that paper surface. And it allows you to monitor just how dark you're going with your piece. This color right here, I absolutely love. This is probably one of my favorite looks. This really light version, although the version of these that I'm duping, this is an almost identical dupe and I want it to get as close to the original color. Um, one of the members on the Peppermint Cactus group posted that. I'd already had these pieces and some chevron pieces put away to do some arrows. And she posted a picture of this particular one. So I decided to run with this particular style and just use the measurements of the pieces I already had out. It worked out just fine. Mine is actually slightly larger than uh, her inspiration piece. So, I've got to get my glue gun a little closer here. It doesn't matter which direction you put this together. Obviously, you'll be able to flip it. I'll slide a little of that out of the way. And I'm going to take my little heat gun. Now, I've warned already on the group page that don't go too crazy with the heat gun on these. It will make that paper rise up. Or you'll start getting bubbles in the middle of your paper. So, try not to go too crazy. You almost would probably be better with a blow dryer with this particular material. So I'm trying not to point too much in one direction. I didn't want these small pieces to be very tacky when I go to touch them. And here's why. They're really little. There's very few spots to really hold on to them when you go to glue them down and if they're still a little tacky you're going to leave fingerprints. I definitely struggled um, to not get fingerprints everywhere. Of course I tend to really get into what I'm doing. I know some of you can't even imagine getting your hands this dirty while crafting. I I don't even mind anymore. I did write it first and now it's like um I'm kind of proud. I was never a painter before and I'm still not technically a painter now, but I'm pretty proud of some of the stuff that I've been able to do. So, I'm not hating it. Okay, 
Now that this is a little less tacky, I can go in and darken it a hair more. I want it as fairly close to the others. I'm giving it more time, if you notice, I'm giving it more time to dry in between these layers than I typically do with the larger pieces. And the reason that I did that and then I'm doing it that way is that these pieces are so narrow. I really didn't want to risk warping them or curling them. This product, the Waverly products work pretty good with this without having a lot of that. But with them being so small, there is a risk that even this little bit of product is enough to curl these guys up. So I'm going to turn it this way. Since my glue gun is this direction. And you're going to line up to one end so that you have this other end open in order to put your arrow to. So I'm going to grab my glue gun. Now I know for a fact that my little strips here, my little skinny three quarter inch strips were not cut entirely perfect. When it starts getting down to this small of a strip, it's a little hard, but you can see this is what I meant about trying not to get fingerprints on these little small ones because they're definitely more noticeable. So with it not being cut entirely perfect, could not get it super straight that thin. It allowed me to put the little gap that was there in the original inspiration photo. So for those of you that are a little panicked about how well you're able to cut these, keep in mind that, especially when you're making rustic looking wood crafts, even when it's real wood, it's not always cut perfectly. And when you're working on these more farmhouse rustic ones, these colors tend to be, these paint colors tend to be pretty forgiving. You see it ends up leaving just a little bit of a gap. Oh, I'm trying to do that with my left hand and it's so shaky. It goes back to my post. My right hand knows how to do everything. My left hand is so confused. Okay. So that's where we're at at this point. Now we're just going to add these little pieces and they peel off this contact paper just fine. So I wanted mine um, to come all the way to the end so that it had this angle part instead of just the flat. You could start up here. Let me give you two options and I cannot remember which way they did it uh, in the inspiration photo. But you could either start up here and you're going to have your little flat area right here showing. I started all the way to the bottom. This also gave me a slightly larger piece. Because um, it gave me about another inch in length. But it gave me... I liked the fletching. Which is what these little pieces are called on an arrow. This end piece. I liked the fletching down where I got this angle. Instead of having a flat end. You could easily go either way. It looks cute either way. I just kind of had to do it that way just because I personally feel like there should be that little point to it. And these you kind of need to hold in place until that little bit of glue dry these end ones definitely because you're not adhering a whole bunch 
down. So these bottom ones, you definitely want to get pretty secure there, and then they help support everything else. I don't know if you guys can hear my door rattling. I have French doors, and the cat gets outside my French doors and rattles them if she feels left out. So there's my first little set. And I did another. I, the set that I saw that I used as the example, they're all separate, like these small pieces. But I did one that was just double the width of these, which this is this strip. Another one of these one and a half inch strips cut with 45 degree angles so that I would have two that were alike and the one in the middle that was slightly different. You could do that either way. I think the inspiration photo, all three of them were this style. So without measuring anything out, I'm just going to kind of go up. The great thing about having these two strips down the center is it kind of shows you exactly where to line these pieces up. And it took, it takes 12 of these little strips for each one. And that was to fit the example. You could easily cut that down, add more to it. Add some color to them. If you're working a color into your space, you could definitely put some color on these after you um, got them to their wood tone. Dry brush them with a little color. I think that could be really fun. I may go back in before mine is all said and done and add a little Dollar Tree jute twine, like maybe up here. You can always add, if you've seen some of my other videos, you can always add the details. I ended up struggling to keep from cracking my foam core, but I did add some little faux staple looks right there at my arrow on that one. Pull these last few up. I'm glad to have discovered this contact paper trick. I keep contact paper all the time. It's what I cover my workspace with. So usually I have like little random scraps. I also use it to make my stencils. So there's always little small pieces left over. This is a great discovery for me, especially doing the pieces that I do out of scraps. It's definitely going to be a game changer when it comes down to painting all these little individual pieces. I had originally planned on getting one of my older Cricut mats that just was not in great shape anymore and trying to stick them down to that. And then I thought about the contact paper and realized I could just toss that when I was done. So and you notice I'm holding these in place a little longer than I typically hold things in place. Part of that is, is because my paint underneath is still a little tacky. And these small pieces, I definitely want good adhesion with. Because they're hanging off this side. Now, I didn't paint the back of these, the fletching just yet. But I'm going to show you what I did do after the fact. So, all of these are glued in place pretty good. I don't feel any major wobbling. So everything was finished off in the back except for this. And all I'm going to do to remedy that is take a little of both colors. Push up real close to that edge. Got those crevices. Let me... Brush that out a little. 
And this is not necessary unless people are picking up your stuff and looking at the back. But I know that they're finished out. So that's just one of my little weird quirks. You definitely don't have to do all of this. I do recommend doing your sides because once you have this together and it's hanging up, you can see the sides and the edges. The back is not necessary. That's just kind of... That's kind of more for my own benefit. Besides, I do like giving the full illusion that this is entirely a wooden piece. So, there we go. There's one more all finished out. So, now I have my entire set of three. They're actually slightly larger than my inspiration piece. And you can tell they definitely look like I've used um, some scrap pieces of wood to make. And all of this was was random scraps that I already had. And I just cut them down to work for this. And these would be super, super, super simple to just... Stick a command strip on the back of this and pop it on your wall. Or use this and attach to a larger backer piece that you've created. I think that would look really good. Either which way, I thought they were pretty cute. I'd already planned on doing the triangles. I'd already had piece or the arrows. I'd already had pieces pulled out to do. When that picture got posted, I'm like, well, those are just as cute as any of the ones I picked out. Um, and any of your arrow forms... As long as you kind of have the basic shapes, the long shaft part, the arrow, and something for the fletching, you can make a million different styles of these. I'm going to move it over a little so you can see the whole thing. Look at the rich tones in those, guys. Now, the one thing I did do different, and I still may go in and do with these, is on this one, if you notice, I did a couple of my faux nail holes. I really liked that extra detail. There wasn't a whole lot I could do detail-wise just because this was so thin and narrow. But I did get to throw that in. I'm not sure how these will hold up without bending. I'm going to try something a little sharper, maybe a paper piercer, in order to get my nail holes in those. But I absolutely love how these turned out. Um, I hope that gives you some ideas on using your scraps. I definitely like to do something with my scraps. So that I don't get overwhelmed with them. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these pieces. But I'd much rather see a bunch of pieces like this laying around. Than I would a bunch of scraps overwhelming me. So there you go. There is. Um, let me see what the overall measurement of this end up being. I think my inspiration piece. Showed. There's were 14 inches. My ruler only goes up to 17, so let's just see. These are about, probably close to 20 inches long, maybe. Yeah, right at about 20 inches long. So this is a pretty substantial piece, and if you group them together, you've got, um, you've got a good little collection, and, um, uh, it was nothing but scraps. Like, really, just scraps, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I really like how these turned out. They definitely look like little pieces of wood. Every time I do this, I'm sitting watching it done. And I know those of you that have tried it, you're starting to get pretty impressed with the results. But once you start messing around with a lot of these more in-depth colors... It really blows your mind. I sit, I watch myself do it, and then afterwards, my brain is still confused that this is not wood in front of me. So, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Can't wait to see some ideas that you come up with. If you haven't checked out the group on Facebook, it's uh, Peppermint Cactus. There's lots of inspiration going up there. We've got threads that are just inspiration threads. There's inspiration coming from ladies that have created using this technique and these ideas, come and add to it. Um, 
and see if something inspires you. I know for several of us, once you kind of get the vibe of this, it's really hard not to look at everything and just think, I'm never buying that again. I know how to make it now. So come give it a try. I hope you guys have as much fun with this as I do. I am a little obsessed. I'm sure I'll get past it. But for now, I hope you don't mind that I share with you.